Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing an oil change on a 2021 uh, RAV4 hybrid. So this is one of my daughter's vehicles. Um, just hitting 25,000 miles. Uh, it's past the free Toyota Care time period. So she was able to use all of her free oil changes with that, but I'll be doing everything from this point on. And I did all the uh, intermediate 5,000 mile ones that they did not cover since they only do them every 10,000 miles. But uh, I wanted to go over a few things though on this oil change today uh, that I've heard about and I wanted to get some feedback and some comments from you guys about some of these things. So let me spin this around So the first thing I want to cover is some of the things that you're going to need to do this and a couple of the options that you also have. So first thing is oil. So they recommend, uh, Toyota does in the manual and it's plastered right here on the, uh, <clears throat> under the hood to use zero W 16. Um, in the manual, it also says you can use zero W 20. Um, so you have your choice. Here's zero W16, here's zero W20. Um, <clears throat> feel free to use either one. I personally prefer zero W20. The 16 to me is just getting a little bit thin on the upside, um, especially for bearing surfaces and bearing protection. Um, the only reason that we're starting to see 0W16 and now even currently 0W8 in some of the newest vehicles is simply because of uh, mandated mileage figures and stuff like that from the government. So it's, it's not the engineers that are requesting this. Nowhere else in the world do they really <clears throat> have such laws that are requiring mileage figures that they're pushing these kind of figures um, for for thinner and thinner oils. Um, so I'm still a much bigger believer of using a 020 on this vehicle. It will not do any damage or hurt the vehicle in any way. And uh, on the contrary, um, it's actually going to benefit the engine long term as far as bearing protection and uh, giving it just a little bit more stable oil at higher temperatures for uh, long-term wear. But take your pick of what you want to use. Um, the oil filter comes stock with uh, what Toyota calls their in one filter. It's just a little tiny guy. You also have the option if you would like to use an F1. So same basic filter, it's just a little bit taller. So a little more filtering capacity. So that is an option. If you're doing your own fil uh, oil changes, you can pick that one up from the dealer. So don't forget to always grab your drain plug gasket. So um, <coughs> oil filter tool. So there's a oil filter wrench. This fits on these oil filters beautifully. I've never found one that works better. I don't like the straps that grab them and stuff. This this fits perfect. There's no slop in it. Um, it, it will take anything off at any time. And uh, best one I've ever found. I'll leave a link to that. Um, you're gonna need some type of ratchet to be able to get this off. Um, 14 millimeter wrench, or you can use this <clears throat> to get off the drain bolt. And on this vehicle, there is a cover and it has some 10 millimeter bolts. So you'll have to remove those. So you can either do it by hand or I have my best friend here, my favorite tool, my Milwaukee Power Ratchet. Makes short work of any kind of bolts like that. So, um, and you're gonna need a drain pan, obviously, and a rag and um, some gloves for your hands. So. Other than that, that's where we sit. So I wanted to point out something though. I was, I have been told, and I, I don't know this for a fact, 
But I've been told by um, someone that the capacity on this vehicle and the earlier RAV4 hybrids called for 4.8 quarts, which it does call for 4.8 quarts with a filter change right here. So <clears throat> I wanted to verify it after being told that and that they have since changed that to 4.5 quarts, um, that 4.8 was overfilling it. So I am going to put four and a half quarts in this, on this change, and then um, I'll run it and circulate the oil, and then I will check it after I'm done, and I wanna see if it's at the full point at four and a half quarts or not. Um, so that is something that I need to make sure, and I will try to remember to make a point of that in the video for everybody else to know too, so that you can double check and make sure on yours if it's 4.5 or 4.8 uh, quarts that it needs. So I will also make mention of it in the description below the video. So I have not heard of that, but I just recently did. Um, so I wanna verify that for myself on her vehicle. And um, it also talks about 016 oil and 020 oil. And um, ironically, it says that 016 is the best choice for good fuel economy and good starting in cold weather. Well, the 0W is your cold weather starting point. So those are both going to be good flow characteristics at cold weather. So, um, and in most most situations, it's not going to be a, any kind of a big deal. In fact, a, a zero W oil is not going to flow as well as a 16 or 20 oil will when 16 or 20 is hot. So when the engine's warmed up, it's actually thinner than a zero W when it's cold. So um, just realize that and the W does not stand for weight. It stands for winter. Most people seem to get that wrong. Not car people per se, but most general people that don't realize that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is spin the cap so that we can ventilate that and let air come in as the oil goes out and we'll get underneath it, pop the cover off and get the oil draining. Here is our panel right here that we want to remove the 10 millimeter oil drain plug right here and here's our filter right here so and this one there is room here if you want to use the longer F1 filter so without any issues let's go ahead and get this drain it out. Interestingly enough, this, uh, this drain is almost straight down. Most of them are at like a, a 45. So, and a little, a little trick that I do on this is if you unscrew it and then, but keep pressure on it, until it starts to drip and then just and then just kind of pull it out of the way usually you don't make too much of a mess and you can get the drain plug without dropping it you always want to look and make sure drain plug gasket comes off and it did with this one if it doesn't it'll it'll stay stuck onto the oil pan and uh, and so then you just want to make sure that you you pop it off so if you double stack them then it will leak so you don't want to do that and it drips to the beat so so this guy on there A 
couple of twists gets it flowing. You can see how easy that was to take off. Doesn't get all jammed up on there. I usually give a couple of twists to the filter, kind of let that try to drain out some like that. So it doesn't take much. I do wish that Toyota does a lot of their engines, it seems like, with this um, horizontal oil filter mount. And I sure wish that they would do a vertical mount. I am a big believer in filling the oil filter. And I do that anyway, because the filter medium holds so much oil that it'll soak it up and you get oil pressure much quicker when you pre-fill an oil filter. And so I can fill it most of the way and only drip out a little bit of oil before I get it snugged up on there. So, okay. Well, you can see the oil drain plug is dripping away. And I am a ha I'm in the habit of letting that drip and get out as much as possible. So we'll let that continue to drip. And on the oil filter area, wipe this down. If you're using an aftermarket filter, make sure that the old <clears throat> that the old filter um, gasket comes off. If you're using a Toyota one, you really don't have to sweat it as much because they're kind of crimped in there. And uh, Toyota does a really good job. Where I've never seen one of these stay on the the engine itself so but I do always wipe it just to make sure there's a clean clean surface on there so we'll go up and pre-fill our new filter and we can put that back on while this continues to drip let's go ahead and pre-fill this filter. <clears throat> One thing I love about Toyota filters is they have a cellophane wrap around them and they come pre-lubricated. So you don't even have to mess with any of that. Put some oil in here. And it is amazing how much oil the fibers soak up and hold. I'm putting in the Mobile One Zero Sixteen in this change because my daughter had already bought this, so I'll go ahead and just use it on this oil change, and then start. <clears throat> After this, we'll switch it over to the Pennzoil Ultra Platinum. Usually, I fill them about three quarters of the way full, but I got that one a little bit too full, but that's okay. It'll just spill back into the drain pan, no big deal. I already know that I'm gonna lose a little bit of this oil just because I accidentally were filled a little bit, but I still put as much as I can in here and it still makes a difference because at least it primes the filter to a degree. Once I once I start threading it on there, it's it's amazing how how quickly it it doesn't drip. And I don't know if you noticed that, but very very little actually dripped out of there. I am not a big fan of over tightening these filters. See a lot of people tighten them up with tools. I tighten them up by hand and I get them as tight as I can. And I've never had one have a problem. If I cannot get my hand on it very well, then I will use a tool. But I'm very careful about not over tightening it. You want the, the O-ring to do the sealing. You don't want to over flatten that by over tightening it. So. Okay, new gasket on. Turn that. It's your 14 millimeter wrench. I like using a wrench just because I have more feel of it. 
And once again, you want the gasket to do the work. I never torque these, but I just get it snug and that's it. So you can tell I'm pulling on it, putting some pressure and it's snug. That's all I want. I want the gasket to do the work. So, so that is all done. I'm not going to put the cover on yet. I always wait to start it up and uh, check for leaks. So, because once you get oil pressure, then you'll be able to tell if there's anything coming from here or from the oil filter. So, let's go top side and fill it up. So, I am big believer 5,000 mile oil changes. I see a lot of people comment that they do 10,000 mile oil changes and they've never had a problem and they've got you know 180,000 miles on their car or something like that. But I'll bet you that the majority of those people have never looked at an engine and compared it to an engine with 5,000 mile oil changes. And I have seen the difference by just taking off the valve cover and you can tell there is a big difference between five and 10,000 mile oil changes. And you will see a lot of mechanics point this out on videos so if you if you go looking for it you will find it so and remember I'm going to stop here a little short I'm going to stop at four and a half quarts it calls for 4.8 like I said I had been I recently been notified that Toyota changed it on these engines I don't know if they did that on other cars, like the Camry and stuff, um, but on the RAV4, I had a RAV4 owner tell me that Toyota notified him that they were changing it to four and a half quarts for capacity because 4.8 was overfilling it. I'm gonna put four and a half in here and I'll start it up and run it while I pull it off the ramps and whatnot, and then I'll let it settle and then I'll check it. It corresponds to about what I would think is 4.5 quarts if it took 4.8. So, so I don't, I don't think that this is an issue on this. I do think this accurately states 4.8 and I think it uses 4.8 unless there is some issue with the dipstick. So, um, but since I don't, since I don't see that on this, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the extra 0.3 in there. I wanted to do my due diligence there. So now keep in mind, this is a 2021, but I wouldn't think that anything would change over the years. So anyways, anybody doing this, maybe check yours just to make sure. Do what I did, add four and a half quarts, check the level and see if it's shy. And if it is, go ahead and put 4.8 in. I know some people will go ahead and just put all five quarts in, knowing that not everything will make it in there out of the five quarts, but um, any questions, comments, I would love to know what you guys think, or if you've heard of that issue, uh, and the newer one's taking 4.5. So until next time, we'll see you down the road. I don't know about others in other parts of the country, but where I live here in Washington State, we have curbside recycling and I can take my used motor oil and put it in a clear, has to be in a clear jug like a milk cart, milk carton or something like that. Or, um, and these work too, These gallon water bottle jugs and uh set these out with oh, that's the wrong cap and uh set these out with uh my recycling which gets picked up tomorrow and 
then they take it and they recycle used motor oil. Um, they also will pick up coolant and transmission fluid. And if it's either of those, you just have to mark what it is. But oil, you don't have to. So just like that, nice and quick and easy.